सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली इन दिस एडिशन ऑफ ग्लोबल प्रिंट डियर व्यूअर आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट ऋषि सुनाक नाउ इट्स ऑलरेडी नॉट हुज ऋषि सुनाक बट व्हाट इज ही डूइंग नेक्स्ट एंड ऑफ कोर्स यू नो हु ही इज ही इज the new prime minister of great britain he's a practicing hindu his parents are hindu but his he was born in england he was born in southampton in 1980 which makes him only 42 years old which also means that he is the youngest prime minister britain has had in the last 200 years now i've said already that he's a practicing hindu but his grandparents uh left india in as long back as 1935 so undivided india his paternal grandfather left gujranwala in undivided punjab in 1935 when he went to kenya to work as a clerk now that also shows what hard work and meritocracy does to people who really have that burning ambition and that will to make it to the top job in life but i'm getting ahead of myself so before i go any further i'd like to make an appeal to you dear viewer please do subscribe pay just a little bit for the prince free fair objective and unhyphenated journalism you have been supporting us very generously these last several months these last couple of years of the pandemic so i do hope that you will click on that button pay a very small amount of money it's rupees 159 only but you become a subscriber and get benefits and privileges that non subscribers don't have and with this little bit of money uh, it encourages us reporters in the print due to the best journalism that you have now become accustomed to these last several years so thank you for subscribing and all those who haven't i would urge you to do to click on that join button now my column global print uh, in this week's the print website came a little bit earlier not on my usual tuesday because of the fast moving developments in british politics Now you know that late last week Liz Truss the former British prime minister quit after only 44 days perhaps the shortest ever prime minister uh, Britain has ever had unfortunately her mini budget is what roiled the financial markets because she had imposed uh, tax cuts which were unfunded and that made the markets very nervous and the pound fell very badly perhaps its worst fall in many months including during the pandemic it hadn't done so badly even then so list trust has now given way to rishi sunak he was the only candidate in the conservative party who threw his hat in the ring it seemed as a boris johnson the previous prime minister who had won the 2019 election who cut short his caribbean holiday actually since he quit 7 weeks ago uh, mr mm-hmm. johnson has taken several holidays this is one of those so he cut short his holiday came back to london hoping that the conservative party would put its weight behind him against rishi sunak who if you remember was the chancellor of the exchequer under under boris johnson now the chancellor of the exchequer as you know is the finance minister very very powerful post but when he saw what johnson had been doing which is by violating all kinds of covid protocols this is the prime minister no less by having parties in his home in 10 downing street then at the time uh, this is during covid of course and at one of the parties actually rishi sunak was also present but when things became went from bad to worse and then there were these sexual abuse allegations on the part of another conservative mp whom boris johnson actually promoted or allegedly promoted in power now johnson of course denies all these allegations so rishi sunak resigned from his from the post as chancellor of the exchequer only minutes before sajid javed the gentleman of pakistani origin he quit he was health secretary that created turmoil in the cabinet in the government and boris johnson was forced to resign so in these last 7 weeks there has been a lot of um churn chaos in british politics finally rishi sunak 42 years old the youngest prime minister that britain has had in the last 200 years 
a practicing Hindu, one who doesn't eat beef, who doesn't drink. And when he became Chancellor of the Exchequer, actually when he became an MP, he swore uh, his oath on the Gita, on the holy book of the, of the Hindus. Now the question is that who is Rishi Sunak? Uh, there has been a lot of interest uh, about him in these last few days. Uh, Prime Minister Modi, when it was clear on Monday that he was going to become Prime Minister, tweeted that both countries, India and the UK, would work together very closely. He described him as a living bridge between India and the UK. And I will talk to you a little bit about that as well. A free trade treaty is on the anvil. It has not been signed so far. And primarily because of the previous uh, immigration minister, Suela Braverman, a woman of Goan origin, uh, in Liz Truss's cabinet, who basically said all kinds of things about immigration, uh, about letting people from developing countries into Britain, and that put a spoke in the wheel of this free trade agreement. Now, we'll see how that unfolds. But meanwhile, to come back to Rishi Sunak, the world has greeted his elevation to power um, in very complimentary ways. Joe Biden, the U.S. president, has said that he looks forward to working with Rishi Sunak. So just to tell you a little bit about the backstory itself, who is Rishi Sunak? Now, I said already that he was born in England. He was born in Southampton in 1980. His parents were born in East Africa in Kenya and Tanganyika, then called Tanganyika, today is Tanzania. It is his grandparents who came from undivided Punjab in the 1930s. His paternal grandfather moved from Gujranwala, which is an undivided Punjab, a small town just outside Lahore, went to Kenya to work as a clerk, while his maternal grandfather went to Tanganyika. So, uh, so basically, Rishi, Rishi Sunak, if India claims him as one of her own, then I should think that both Kenya and Tanzania and perhaps even Pakistan, although there was no Pakistan then, there was one country called India. I think all of us have the right to claim this young man who is now the head of a country that is not just a major economy, part of the G7, but also one of the five countries that wields the veto in the UN Security Council. So one of the five permanent members, the P5, one of the P5 in the UN Security Council, by all uh, accounts, a very, very powerful nation. And at the head of this country today is Rishi Sunak, a British uh, Hindu of Indian African heritage. I think that's a good way of describing him. So this afternoon, uh, Rishi Sunak went to meet King Charles, who asked him what his plans were about reviving the economy. And uh, it is said that Mr. Sunak assured him that he would work, not just work very hard, but also take everybody along. And it is, it's a bit like a revolving door because Liz Truss, the previous prime minister, went to meet King Charles to say that she was over and out. And just as she was leaving, or minutes after she had left, Rishi Sunak went to Buckingham Palace to meet King Charles because the way that it's done in Britain is that it is His Majesty's government and it's at His Majesty's pleasure that the government uh, survives and it works. Now, the King, of course, has absolutely nothing to do with the working of the government. That is the prerogative of the Prime Minister and his cabinet. Now, one of the accusations against uh, Rishi Sunak is that he is an unelected Prime Minister, but that was also true for Liz Truss. Because the last time that there was an elected prime minister in England was in 2019 when Boris Johnson became prime minister. Now, he's, of course, a man who's hugely charismatic and it was clearly in the back of his charisma and, uh, and the fact that perhaps the British public was fed up of what the Labour Party, that's the opposition party in power today, uh, was doing. So it elected the Tories or the Conservatives into power. And Boris Johnson, of course, was a key member of that, the leader of the Tory party at that time. But today in his acceptance speech in front of 10 Downing Street, which is going to be his home for the next couple of years before elections are held once again in Britain, Rishi Sunak answered that question that was in the minds of the media, of, of the people of Great Britain and elsewhere in the world, which is that he's an unelected prime minister. And while that is true, but he also said that in 2019, even Boris Johnson will admit that while Mr. Johnson is the one that got the vote, 
but it was also the people of England who voted the Conservative Party in power. So what Sunak was implying was that as a key member or as a leader of the party today, he inherited that vote. Now, certainly he's not going to fall into the trap of people, to, which is to say that uh, that, they, that elections should be called immediately. Although the Labour Party today uh, in, in polls is doing better than the Conservatives, but the way the rules are in England, the Conservative Party has a right to rule until five years are completed, which will be in 2024, so another couple of years from now. So if Rishi Sunak is able to marshal the party, marshal the, the brains of the party, the energies of the party, bring everybody together, keep everyone together, then he has a fair chance that at the end of these couple of years, that's if he was, isn't forced to leave before that, like Liz Truss was, he will be able to go to the polls as prime minister. And that is the second theme that he spoke about in his acceptance speech in front of 10 Downing Street, one of unity. He said that he has been named, or he has become prime minister of a country that he loves very much um, to, to serve. And to serve the British people, he said that he knows that, uh, that the people are going through a very tough time and he is here to help fix things and to make them better. So he reminded people that during the pandemic, through the schemes that he had uh, put into motion, one of them was this emergency mass job retention scheme where people who would have been otherwise laid off were able to take 80% of their income home they were at home, not working um, or working from home. And a lot of them were in fear of being laid off. So Rishi Sunak's scheme of mass job retention actually saved the job and the families of thousands and thousands uh, during the COVID pandemic. And he said in his speech that I promise that I will bring the same kind of compassion as prime minister to the challenges that confront us. And he talked about the financial mess that, had, that is staring everybody in the face. Now, if you go to my column, Global Print, you will, you will understand what I'm talking about. Because what happened with Liz Truss was that when she unveiled uh, what was called a mini budget, she basically cut the taxes of the rich and wealthy in Britain, which would otherwise have been fine because that's one of the ideological underpinnings of the Tory party. But... What she also did was that she was unable to show where she was going to get the money or the funds to make up the difference that would have been lost from the tax cuts. So since she was unable to do that, and like I said earlier, that really roiled the markets, that really made them very nervous, and the pound fell as a consequence. Now, with Rishi Sunak, seen to be the safest pair of hands in England today, said at the acceptance speech in front of 10 Downing Street that he was aware of this huge challenge that had been put on his shoulders and that uh, he was ready to confront this by taking everybody along. Now, dear viewer, I haven't addressed the elephant in the room, which is one of race and of class, or two elephants in the room. Now, it's very clear that Britain did not want or was uncomfortable with the fact that there would be a man of color, the first ever prime minister of color, uh, of Asian origin, of Indian origin, of course, uh, didn't know how to deal with a man of color. So when Boris Johnson was supposed to quit uh, as prime minister in July, there was no question who was the abler person, the abler successor between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. Clearly it was Rishi Sunak. But the people uh, in the Conservative Party, the general Conservative Party membership, was unwilling to have a brown man or a man of color to lead them. So clearly, Rishi Sunak, the better man, the abler man, had to give way to Liz Truss. And, and I think that if there was yet another candidate in the ring today, whether Penny Mordaunt, the uh, former defense secretary, who had thrown, his, thrown her hat in the ring, but then she withdrew from the race, I think the people of the Conservative Party would have found another way to not elect uh, Rishi Sunak. But as it turned out, I think even Penny Mordon realized that the Conservative Party was very nervous. Like one of the uh, British reporters said today, it was looking over the precipice of its own oblivion. So if there is a chance today 
for Rishi, for somebody in Britain to be able to deliver the, the Conservative Party out of this mess and to de deliver the country out of its mess, it's clearly Rishi Sunak. He is a former hedge fund manager with Goldman Sachs. Uh, he's, uh, he went to some of the best schools in England. He went to Stanford University, where he met his wife, Akshita. She's the daughter of Narayan Murthy, an Infosys founder, very rich in her own independent estimation. In fact, we, nobody knows how much they're worth, but it's said that both of them together perhaps um, have more money than, than the king or the monarchy. Now, that's saying quite a bit. So all in all, I think... This interest in Rishi Sunak will remain for a few days, of course, about who he is, where he's come from. He hasn't come from very far. He's come from Southampton. But the interest will remain. But the big question, will he be able to deliver Britain from the financial mess that it finds itself in today? So keep watching, dear viewer. And I look forward to hearing your comments uh, on this video. And I will keep updating you and bringing you all the best stories um, in the world of uh, foreign affairs to you in my column, Global Print. Thank you again for watching.